We're watching the Keith Lee effect. I'm not gonna lie to you. I trust Keith Lee with my whole life. You understand? He's a beast. I love him. He's my favorite. Imagine you own a restaurant and the difference between having a line of hungry customers out the door every day or your establishment looking like a Yo, ghost. imagine just having, oh my God, on oh God. Imagine being this restaurant, dude, and you have a whole line that covers up your doors. I'd be mad. Oh God, I'm out there with a broom. Nah, that. Wrap it around the other way. You know how mad I'll be, bro? I'll be jealous as shit. I might, I'm lighting that place on fire. Fuck that. Something gotta go. I'm blowing shit up. Pipe bombs. Ghost Town is based on the experience of one man. Keith that Lee. one man is not a professional food critic nor a culinary expert, but millions of people around the country treat his word like gospel. Mm. That is the Keith Lee effect. Keith Lee is either Batman or Joker when it comes to restaurant owners. Mm. But once you hear his story, you will understand why he has such a cult-like following. It's much deeper than a guy who has decent taste buds. Keith Lee is a man who failed at the one thing he was actually good at. Oh. Then at his darkest moment, he refused to give up and created a meteoric influence in an industry he had no business being in. Keith described himself as a very small child who felt the need to go. display his dominance to overcompensate for his short stature. His mm. bad behavior led to him getting expelled from every school in the Detroit, Michigan I'm area. not gonna lie to you. I think every, like, I have a picture like this. Every young man has a picture like this, bro. It's not even like, it, it's just, it's, you need one. You know what I mean? Who is Kenji? Motherfucker, that's me. What the hell is going on, bro? I'm trying to tell you, like, y'all not locked in, young man. Yeah, when I was a when I was a young man, you know what I mean, with my little iPhone fucking 3C. All right, I, I took me a picture like this. I'm not gonna lie, I actually have a before and after picture like this, looking mad skinny, and then I got another one looking buff and hot as fuck. You know what I mean? That globe went crazy. Area ...before attending a charter school as a last resort, where he barely managed to graduate the eighth grade. This mid? What do you mean this mid? Timed out for four hours. Shut up. So by the time I got to high school, I was a wee head, mm -hmm. smoking every day. I'm talking about bad, bad, mm -hmm. like every day. Um, my freshman year, I had a 0. .6. Oh, GPA. Things would get even Damn. worse for Keith in high school where he lived in the shadow of his brother. Keith's older brother Kevin had already garnered a remarkable reputation as a star athlete who graduated with a 3.9 GPA before receiving a scholarship to wrestle for Grand Valley State University, which is an NCAA Division going II crazy. school. Keith decided to follow in his brother's footsteps for all the wrong reasons. When I got there, it was more out of spite. It was more out of uh, arrogance. It was more out of just like now I'm approved to you, I can do it, and I don't even want to do it. I'm going right. to just do it because you told me I can't do something else. So I'm going to just do it just to shit on you, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He utilized all his pent-up aggression and transferred it out on the wrestling mat, where he showed was a he genuine good? talent for the sport Ooh. and squashed his competition. But he was a stubborn, disobedient child who didn't focus he on He just looked grade. bad, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. He looked like he beat his mom or some shit. He looked bad as hell. ...didn't stay disciplined and quit the team. Then his father got arrested and imprisoned following a heated altercation with some people in his neighborhood. His father's inability to provide for his family meant Keith, his mother, and younger brother were forced to move into an abandoned home where Keith started to question his religious faith and overall perspective on life. At his lowest moment, the only way he could go was up. He stopped smoking, stopped hanging out with bad influences, mm. and got back into wrestling. Fast forward to his senior year, Keith averaged a 3.6 GPA and was preparing to wrestle at the Michigan High School State Championships, That's amazing. which hadn't been achieved by a student at Southfield High School since the 90s. He received a partial scholarship to wrestle for Indiana Tech. Yeah, that my pool something. Look at his face. Oh my God. I'm just saying like, if I ever see my son get his ass whooped so bad, he make this face on his back, b that. I'm stopping a match. I'm taking him. I'm taking him to... Yeah, we going home, son. We're going home. We need to find you a different sport. F that. Hell no. He's turned into a pretzel right now on his back. But made a critical error. He never actually enrolled in school. He showed up at Indiana Tech, connected with the wrestling coach, attended random classes, and got fully immersed into the college life. <laughs> he was expecting a dorm room since he thought he had a scholarship, but when he showed up to the admissions office, they were confused. They take me to the office and they like, you don't have no paperwork filled out, sir. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, they was like, they was like, only thing we have is the offer letter that we sent you what? we only got your name and your information from the offer letter <laughs> was like, that's all we know about you we don't know nothing else <laughs> he treated it like a birthday party invitation you sent me the invitation <laughs> i just showed up keith laughs about the situation now but at the time he was devastated <laughs> they told keith if he didn't pay them twenty thousand dollars for the semester Dang. and two thousand dollars for the application fee he wouldn't be allowed to go to school unable to get a loan keith had to move back with his family who relocated to las vegas College he was now scam. sharing bunk beds with his 14 year old brother who regularly reminded keith that he was a loser 
sir. Uh, At this point, I'm in the deepest depression I've been in in a long time. Because I'm like, oh, the reality is sitting in. Yeah, He's right. Yeah. I'm not in school. I don't have a job. I got fired already. I didn't quit a job. My Monkey. track history with work is already terrible. I didn't got kicked out of school. Yeah. I don't have no other offers. Right. Nothing is nothing in life is looking bright to me right now. Right. I don't have nothing going for me. Keith's older brother Kevin had recently secured a contract to fight in the UFC as Kevin the Motown Phenom Lee. And Whoa. Kevin was a savage. At his peak, he held a 16-2 professional record and was toe-to-toe -to -toe with legends like Tony Ferguson oh. and Charles Oliveira. Kevin forced Keith to get into the gym with him and on his first day, their coach Dewey Cooper realized the potential Keith had as an MMA fighter. Uh -oh. Desperate for money and a purpose, Keith trained for a year straight and won his first four amateur fights. The only two losses he had were by split decision meaning he was a very promising prospect. However, he was earning next to nothing for these. 500 Yeah, by the way, yo, chat, if you are a fighter or if anyone wants to go into fighting, I, I, I know we got a lot of girls here, but if we have any dudes watching, bro, understand fighters don't get paid shit, bro. You just get a bunch of brain damage and fucked up joints, bro, okay? So that being said, what you need to do is get your clout up, okay? Get a social media, media following, okay? Get like a cult following, get an online presence, and then fight, you understand? So you could do both at once, but make sure Sure, you're doing it the smart way that way you abuse the system you know what i mean that way you could go fight some score you get to pick whoever the fuck you want to fight you have a you just let's say you get 100k followers 50k uh 500k followers or whatever the fuck and you'd be like i want to fight that motherfucker right there knowing damn well he's a scrub but you're gonna get paid a lot more you know what i mean so it's like you're taking easier fights you're getting paid more it's just smarter bro you know what i mean and then you're getting fights way easier as well you get to pick and choose so that being said Make sure you do it smart and don't just take brain damage for no reason. You only get one body. Thousand dollars per fight. Keep in mind, this was over the course of three years. So he was broke following a rotation of various low end jobs. But luckily he met his girlfriend, now wife, Ronnie, while working <laughs> for ASICS. Keith credits Ronnie with being the anchor to keeping him grounded and focused on becoming the best version of himself. I need me following a girl like victory that. against Leonardo Carvalho at Global Legion FC 13, Keith proposed to his girlfriend Ronnie and intentionally got her pregnant to Two days later. Oh. On the same day of the proposal, Keith's manager informed him that his victory against Carvalho earned him a six-figure contract Whoa. with Bellator. He won his very first Bellator bout against Sean Bunch. It took many years, but once he finally had a support system around him, wife, coaches, brother, he was able to crawl out of the repetitive cycle of depression and low ambition. Nice. Now with some free time and spare income, Keith signed up for TikTok. Keith's journey on TikTok started just like anyone else, participating in trends for no reason other than it seemed fun. From there, his uploads were just random things that pertain to his everyday life. He was getting maybe 50 views per video, but it seemed more like an outlet for him to have fun rather than <laughs> start a business. But then the pandemic hit, the world shut down, and Keith needed to make something happen. I downloaded TikTok after I kept saying I wouldn't. Now I'm sick and tired of every video I post, only getting 50 views. I'm gonna sit here with my dog and tip me and get famous. In an attempt to garner more views, Keith began posting psychology facts videos. He gained a little bit of traction, but it didn't last long. Mm. He started to become desperate for virality. You want to be famous? Follow these simple instructions. Ooh. Download another mother app, because this ain't the one. Oh, damn. He was down bad here, bro. This ain't it, Chief. It ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> never. He would cash out Damn. people if they solved a riddle. He posted math problems for people to solve. Even though he looked defeated, he refused to give up. At this point, Keith was obsessed with the platform, posting daily, if not multiple times per day. He started featuring his I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Oh, he started featuring my chat. I don't know how it would feel if I was like, like chat, you're dating a guy and he's just constantly posting on TikTok. It's like, yo, my man is like, you a grown ass man, dude. Get the fuck off that little ass app. Go make you some real money, you know what I mean? Meanwhile, like he's building something. He's building something. Let him cook. Let him cook. But I'm just saying, it's kind of sad when you really think about it. What if Keith Lee never popped off? What if he never ate a chicken nugget and said, mm, this is a nine out of 10? You know what I mean? Like what happens? You see what I'm saying? That's scary. It's scary. Ronnie on his page after he went semi-viral talking about building a nursery for their expected baby. He then proceeded to document milestones throughout their pregnancy, many of which received thousands of views and ignited a dramatic shift in Keith's content. Nice. In September of 2020, Keith won his second fight against Venetia Zani. Whatever they have in store for me, I'm always here to fight. I'll fight as soon as my daughter's born. My daughter's born in four days. So as soon as she gets here, I'm ready to go again. 
He didn't lie. Just one week later, he and Ronnie welcomed their first child, Carter. From there, Ooh. Keith's whole TikTok was dedicated to documenting him being a parent. His loving and nurturing attitude towards his child attracted a large following of supporters. He provided mm. them with wholesome moments, such as clipping his daughter's nails for the first time and celebrating her first Halloween. This was his family man era. Aww. Keith took a fight on short notice, just two months after his previous, to fight on the main card at Bellator 253. Unfortunately, he lost by decision to Rafian Stotts, but that didn't ruin his spirits. Keith the family man kept posting his terrible dancing videos and even started sprinkling in some cooking content. By mm. mid-2021, he had accumulated 1 million followers and was averaging maybe 100,000. Damn, he got 1 mil like that? Yo, chat, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm slacking. Chat, we gotta hit 1 mil on TikTok. That's probably the easiest fucking uh, app to grow on, chat. ...thousand views per post. This was his foundation. The people that knew Keith was a humble, honest family man. Unfortunately, he would hit a new rock bottom when he lost his six-figure Bellator contract. Oh. In August of 2021, he was set to face his toughest opponent yet, who was undefeated. Keith was beaten and bloody and then submitted in just the first round. Then got up, Damn. On, then got up while unconscious and stumbled headfirst into the cage. Damn. The clips of his loss made the rounds on social media. He was embarrassed. He got a call from his manager saying he was cut from Bellator. Keith was back to rock bottom. His first TikTok back after his loss was him, poetically, ordering some food. I have these sunglasses on because my eyes black and my face is beat up. I'm fine though for anybody. Well, I'm not fine, but I'll be fine. He had 1 million followers, but he was only making around $400 per month on TikTok. His fight career was looking grim, and mm. TikTok didn't seem realistic. Then he got a call from the owner of Harold's Chicken just a couple days after his loss. They asked him to do a review of their establishment. At the time, he didn't know it, but Keith just discovered his next big venture. Oh, shit. Right, Harold's Chicken in Las Vegas. They didn't have no mac and cheese, but it's okay. Overall, I get a food up. 9 out of 10. Mmm. Without question. Following his review of Harold's Chicken, Keith made food reviews as a side quest on his page. However, his main focus was on family vlogs and cooking content. He was still largely referred to as the cooking guy, regularly being asked about his cooking content during interviews. In January of 2022, his wife became pregnant with their second child, and they desperately needed to find another source of income. He started doing more and more food reviews, but they weren't that organized. I don't know how motherfuckers have babies. That babies are f expensive bro holy shit doesn't make sense i want like 17 kids i'm not gonna lie to you i want a bunch of kids but like fuck. why diapers cost like 20 dollars for like two how the fuck does that make sense they, they shitting on 10 dollars each fuck. i'm poor and he was very generous with his ratings we are sitting outside of firehouses because today we are doing an official food review this has the perfect amount of spice like my tongue is tingling a little bit i got that feeling on my lips you still taste all of the flavor 10 out of 10. Keith says he leaned on his faith and prayed something good would come from this TikTok thing. And it did. In June of 2022, he signed a brand deal with Wingstop worth six figures, the Whoa. same amount he had lost from the Bellator contract. He successfully was making a career on TikTok, but it was about to get a whole lot better. His food reviews slowly started to become his main content because his brutal honesty was very entertaining. Altogether, this food was $60 and the customer service was terrible. The lady at the front where I was picking up was really rude. Like extremely rude. Mm -hmm. I had to call back and get her name. I think she lied because she answered the phone like I didn't recognize her voice and said, hold on, let me go get the girl. You the girl. Then in October, <laughs> the popular YouTube channel People vs. Food approached him to collaborate on their channel, and he accepted. This channel has over 12 million YouTube subscribers, and he knew the exposure would help his- I don't like her. The one to the left, I remember listen, her. she listened to um X's music for like the first time. I think there was like two songs that she listened to. I didn't like her reaction at all. TikTok career immensely. By the way, double check if you're subscribed to my channel. I asked my wife what I should post on my page to make people not only come and watch, but actually follow. And we decided to post one full review every day. The first got like 11 million views. From there, Keith's entire content shifted to strictly food reviews. He has only been doing it full time for one year at this point, but he never could have predicted what was about to happen next. While up. most high profile food critics only pay attention to high end restaurants that are too expensive for most, Keith shifted that focus onto affordable, small, family owned mm. restaurants that were easily accessible to the public. Or w. fast food slash popular affordable food chains. He even went he out- He low-key probably did that because bitch, that's expensive. Eating out every day, 
you talking about? Mm -mm. I'm going to the street corner. They got $2 tacos. I'm going there. That's my favorite place. ...of his way to give a chance to establishments that were struggling financially. That's so However, cool. Keith doesn't consider himself a food critic. I want to do some his cool reviews stuff. feel and look like one of your friends giving you a casual breakdown. A typical review would be him ordering three or four different items on the menu, like a family of four would, then tasting every single item and rating it from one to ten. He often throws in other notes like their customer service or additional information that is relevant to the experience. I got it. Let's try it and rate it 1 through 10. I spent $23.84 on three bow buns <laughs> and a drink. But bro, that's what they look like. Mm. Custom service. Delightful. It was a very short interaction, but the guy who worked at the front was really nice. And the actual building itself, very aesthetically pleasing. It made me want to eat. It made me want to eat. <laughs> Wait a minute, bro. Personally, it was lacking spice. So to add the salsa, took the tacos itself from a 9 to a 9.7. That's one of them ones. Even when he gives a negative mm -hmm. review to the food, he will provide more context so it doesn't come off as unfair. He often goes out of his way to leave massive tips, sometimes hundreds of dollars to workers that give him good service. That's so cool. Since he had already built a strong foundation during his Family Man era, there wasn't necessarily one viral review that changed his life. His growth has been steady, and along the journey, his audience latched onto his down-to-earth attitude, unwavering love for his wife and kids, and dedication to God. But even if you don't know about his past after watching a few videos you can just feel he is a kind and genuine man he's they like an authentic person Keith bro not being technically qualified nor having a depth of culinary knowledge he thinks what sets him apart is his values i stand on my integrity i stand on my values and i don't allow those to be wavered or to be shook no matter the amount of money the opportunity or the people i'm surrounded by and do you understand how hard that is bro chat imagine would you be strong enough if you do food reviews online right and you're making some decent money imagine how strong you need to be and authentic you need to be to turn down like a mcdonald's deal mcdonald's hits you up and you know mcdonald's is fucking mid you know if you do a food review on mcdonald's it's gonna be ass okay but you you turn down a fucking multi-million dollar deal from mcdonald's just because you want to be real with them you know what i mean and mid as hell yeah but like the, think about it because he could really take or he could take a million dollars and he could be like oh yeah no it's so good oh this new mcdonald's meal is so good and everybody's gonna line up for that new mcdonald's meal you feel me i pass and stay poor yeah bro I don't, not a lot of people would do that chat i'm not gonna lie to you see see a people like me you know what i mean like me myself i skip i skip on that i'm lying what mcdonald's offer me fucking a million dollars on god i'm telling you right now yo you gonna see me on that tiktok happy as shit i got it let's rate it one through ten mm, i didn't even bite the bitch yet i just smell it mm, it smells so good bitch. oh my god is this mcdonald's this smell gourmet this new fry seasoning that they use it you must get it oh my God, it's so good, bro. What? I'm lying like a motherfucker on that video. I don't care. With nearly 10 million loyal followers, a full-time dedication to quality reviews of local or less popular restaurants, a phenomenon dubbed the Keith Lee effect would take over Las Vegas, then all over the USA. Mm -hmm. One of the first beneficiaries of the Keith Lee effect was a local food truck called 303 in the Cut. In November 2022, Keith's review blew up and garnered over 35 million TikTok oh. views since its initial upload. Keith confirmed their cheese cake sandwich was a 10 out of 10 and the next night 303 Holy had people shit. waiting in line for over an hour wrapped around the corner for their food the owner said they doubled their income in one day and it stayed that way for over a year one las vegas That's pizzeria insane. he reviewed frankincense made headlines for attracting lines around the block because keith gave their wings a 10 pizza a 9.8 and garlic knots a 9.2 however it wasn't just the food it was keith's interaction with the owner frank that made people want to support him even more mm. if i don't like the food i got it tell you i'm not trying to be malicious and he was like i'm gonna be real with you too i need help yeah, yeah, yeah that hit me here he said mm. the food is delicious he has great reviews on yelp the only bad reviews is that he don't close the time it says that he closed on google the time it says he closed on google is 1 a.m he was like i literally can't afford to open that late because we don't get that much business frank mm. if you're watching this i'm gonna be completely honest you are an amazing man from what i saw i appreciated your time and i appreciated your conversation Let's try this food. According to Frank, Frankincense had to hire 23 new team members in the six weeks following Keith's review Holy and shit. had guests from all over the world patiently waiting for over three hours for his pizza. Frank said he was thankful that Keith helped his business and the overall community at large in Las Vegas. Yasser Zermino, owner of Aroma Latin American Cochina, asked Keith to come review their restaurant through email. Keith gave all five different items over a nine, including the Oaxaca sandwich, which he said was the best he had ever had in his 
life. The owner said, we went from not being able to pay the bills to now having to hire people to come and help us. That's so awesome, Other bro. Vegas based businesses that Keith reviewed have seen instant growth, like Caribbean restaurant, The Pink Potato, or Southern Taste Seafood, a food truck that went from making $200 or under a day to seeing a 900% increase in revenue in the days following Keith's review. But his impact wasn't just on small businesses. Even Chipotle, the fast casual chain- I'm eating Chipotle right now! that generated $8.6 billion in revenue in 2022 saw the benefits of the Keith Lee effect. In early 2023, a reviewer named Alexis Frost posted a review of a menu hack, an order of a steak quesadilla with extra cheese and fajita veggies that fans say tastes like a Philly cheesesteak. Keith reviewed it and gave it a 9.8. Then chaos ensued. Chipotle workers all over the country were overwhelmed with the tens of thousands of people coming in to order this hack. One employee said the worst shift of her life was servicing this trend. Another employee said a customer tried to swing on him, aka fight him, because he couldn't make the food. Managers started posting signs that say, protein and cheese on quesadilla only. Chipotle realized the only way to solve this problem was by adding the hack as an option on their menu, dubbed the Keithadilla. Keith quickly became well known. He's in, of, he's a fucking menu item? I'm about to order, why did I get this little bowl, bro? I just got Chipotle. I should've got me a Keith Adilla, fuck. For Las Vegas. Once he partnered up with Mr. Beast to give $10,000 to a struggling business, he couldn't even go outside without being swarmed. So he dressed up in silly disguises <laughs> to avoid being recognized. But his impact is not just in Vegas. Keith got to review a local Brooklyn bakery that he selected while being interviewed on Good Morning America, while also donating $10,000 to that business. He continued to do press runs, being interviewed on talk shows around America, and of course, reviewing food. So now that we know how much positive impact Keith can have on a business when he likes the food, what about when he doesn't like the food? It gets dark and wicked, bro. Oh my God. I just seen some, uh, there's a whole lot of controversy about it, bro. It was mad as shit. Well, unfortunately, the entire city of Atlanta would find out about the negative side of the Keith Lee effect. Uh -oh. In October, 2023, Keith announced to his nearly 15 million TikTok followers that he and his family were traveling to Atlanta, Georgia, and needed some restaurants. They were not ready for him, bro. He had previously made videos in Detroit, Chicago, New Orleans, New York, and Los Angeles, but Atlanta's food scene is entirely different, which prompted a lot of mixed reviews from Keith. The drama first began when Keith visited the Atlanta Breakfast Club, where he wanted to take the food to go, but they didn't have anywhere to sit and wait for the food. So instead, they decided to dine in, but the restaurant wouldn't allow them to sit down at a table and be served unless the entire party was there. Upon finding out that they were charged $1 for butter at a breakfast place, it was just an annoying cherry on top. Little did Keith know, mm. it was about to get worse. Keith posted his review of The Real Milk and Honey. However, he didn't actually get any food. Firstly, he tried- I remember this, bro. To call ahead and order. They don't accept call-ins. You can only order on the DoorDash app. But DoorDash said that they were closed. So they drove to the establishment in the middle of the day and the employees said they were closed for deep cleaning while there were customers walking in and picking up orders. Then Keith walked into the restaurant and they recognized him and immediately attempted to serve him since mm -mm. he was famous, to which he declined. Keith has always been very expressive that he doesn't want nor deserve special treatment from restaurants. These days, he sends in his friends and family to do orders so he doesn't receive bias from the establishment. He wants his experience to match any ordinary person. I've personally never seen a restaurant have a rules list, but the real milk and honey have a ton. We guarantee great food. Everything else is left to chance. <laughs> well, Keith Lee got that bad, huh? I know they mad as shit. You better change their rules, bitch. You better guarantee good fucking food and great service. Stop playing with me, bro. Fuck out of here. We do not provide individual checks. 18% gratuity added to parties of five or more or checks larger than $105. No reservations, unless you're Barack Obama. No parties larger than four on days that end in Y. Keith was what? clearly frustrated that a business would change the rules when it benefits them, but he didn't want people to attack the real milk and honey because he had a bad experience. However, the internet, being the internet, started attacking. There was actually another restaurant called Milk and Honey whose owners were receiving death threats uh -oh. in the DMs because of people confusing them with the other restaurant. But if you had any sympathy for the real Milk and Honey, it would be gone once you saw their response video they uploaded to TikTok. I remember this. Did you see this Keith Lee video about the real milk and honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy. You don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. The owner tried to look cool and pretend like he didn't know the entirety of social media is destroyed. The worst f 
important response you can ever make especially keith lee because he was being so generous and nice in that review too oh my god destroying his business but it only made people want to support their business less to add insult to injury Keith reviewed the bodega positively, which is directly next door to the Real Milk and Honey. He which did that on purpose. He had to. There's no way. Resulted in a line of customers skipping the Real Milk and Honey to wait in line for the bodega. <laughs> but the shenanigans continued. Keith reviewed another ATL restaurant called Old Lady Gang. But again, did not get any food. He tried to call their number. No answer. Tried to order on DoorDash, said they were closed. He sent his family into the physical store to do takeout. They said they don't do to-go orders on the weekends, but the wait to dine in was one and a half hours and they didn't take reservations. What? Instead of leaving, Keith decided to walk in where he was recognized and immediately they offered him a seat. Wow! Skipping the entire hour and a half wait, to which Keith denied because he didn't want any celebrity treatment. This is exactly how it is for us regular ATL folks. Imagine them telling you your wait time is one and a half hours, then someone else comes up and sits immediately. Keith left and visited visited Toast on Lennox, where he didn't plan on doing a review but arrived to a two and a half hour wait time. When Jeez. he politely left, the entire staff walked out and offered him a seat immediately, to which he denied again. And but I saw this, and then he was like, he was like, nah, 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 I see net, those girls have been waiting for fucking a while, bro. Fuck that, if they eat, then I'll eat. That's what he said, bro. He's so goaded, chat. Imagine, people, people love special treatment, chat. People would die for special treatment, dude, okay? This guy's like, fuck that, treat me like any other motherfucker, keep that same energy bro i love that he's so real for it i love it i love it there were videos that went viral of him in the parking lot seemingly arguing with the staff but he was just letting them know that he didn't want to skip the line but keith's experiences are not just unique to him cardi b spoke on the subject on an ig live i feel like atlanta restaurants they don't like to make money i feel like they don't like people they don't like their customers they just don't like it First thing first, right? You could barely order in Atlanta restaurants. Like you go like, hey, I would like to make an order. Oh yeah, we don't make, we don't we don't take orders. We don't take orders. It gets to the point that I literally have to name like I have to tell like people that order food for me like, can you just name drop my name? Because mm -hmm. first and first, they just don't they don't do no pickup orders. They don't do deliveries. They just don't do shit. And of course, we got some hilarious memes from this whole situation. You walk in. Let me show you how it's done. Hello, sir. How are you today? May I take your order? You talk like that. We talk like that, cause Keith Lee is in town, bro. That boy Keith Lee in Atlanta, huh? Hey, y'all, are y'all little booze at restaurants? Y'all better get on your goddamn Zoom now. <laughs> hey, uh, milk and honey. Uh huh. See, that was how I get for giving me attitude when I told y'all my partner was just down the street parking the car. Although most people were understanding of Keith's frustration with these ATL businesses, others, like ex-football player Chad Ochocinco, thought he was trying to tear down black-owned businesses. I don't, like I don't like the critiquing of our restaurants and, and having people... Keith Lee respond to him, made him look stupid as shit, and then Ocho was like, you know what, he got it. He's right, bro. He's right. And, 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 and talking bad about our goddamn businesses and Ocho. like, dude, you know Ocho. how hard, you know how Idiot. hard it is and I get it. Ocho. for us. To oh, even no. get in the food industry. What are the qualifications of being a food critic? Go to a restaurant and do you like the food? Did you like the customer service? What was it like? Yes. What was the wait time like? That's all you got to do. At the end of the day, Keith just gives his honest opinion and experience, mm -hmm. but he implores everyone to try for themselves. If he is too positive, his opinion will hold no weight. If he is too negative, he will be seen as destructive. But he was positive in that review too, which is so crazy. Always be haters. However, broadcasting his opinion to 14 million followers will, without a doubt, prevent a lot of people from trying a restaurant. If someone I trust says, don't go somewhere to eat, I'll probably listen to them. Mm -hmm. Or if I have one bad experience, I probably won't go there again. This is why some people argue that you can't have a bad day in the customer service industry. If you can't afford a bad review, then you shouldn't give bad service, especially if you are inviting a food critic to your establishment, which a lot of these restaurants do. Through all the drama, Keith found a lot of gems in Atlanta. The seafood menu, Juicy Jerk, the dining experience, which he personally tipped the owner $2,000, and Jamaican Jerk Biz, where the- I know motherfuckers are so mad. They probably been gatekeeping these spots for years, bro. Gatekeeping these spots for years. Like, yeah, this my secret spot. No one knows about this good ass food, bro. You know what I mean? They charge $3 and they give you a huge late crab legs, all that. Bitch, Keith Lee come in town, blow the whole spot up. He got people flying into the motherfucking states and trying to goddamn fly. I be mad as shit. Now you gotta wait two fucking hours. They gonna up their price by fucking 50. You paying $57 for something you used to pay $3 for. And now you gotta wait seven hours for the shit. F 
Damn, Keith Lee! The owner broke into tears when he walked in. He asked the owner what her sales were for the day, which was $2,600, and he paid her $3,000 for his meal. However, Keith just announced that he's on his way to Houston to do a food tour, and restaurant owners are trembling. Uh. In just 10 months of fame, Keith has helped hundreds of businesses, raised tens of thousands of dollars for charity, and continues to spread love and positivity during a time where we need it the most. That's awesome. Maybe from here he will start a food review show, or a cooking show or maybe an app for restaurants all around the country that he recommends. As mm. long as he remains the positive and wholesome man social media knows and loves, they will support whatever endeavor he chooses. 